Hello, in this video I'm going to explain how to convert your uh, Lightroom presets like these to uh, LUTs. You can use LUT files for, uh, for example, in Darktable. So I use this to convert my pre presets in Lightroom to Darktable. I'm going to show how. Um, First of all, I installed this program, the LUT generator. What you can do with this, you can first generate a held file. Let's do that. Um, I'm just putting me here in documents. Select folder. And now you have in your folder a PNG which you can import into Lightroom. I already done that here in this folder. You can see it here. This is the PNG, the program generated. What you can do with this is make your edits on this image and export it to a LUT file. So we can, I can show you how to do that. For example, develop. For example, if you are in this image, you choose your preset. I like this one. And then you can copy all the uh, adjustments this preset made to this neutral 512.png. So what we do is copy and select only the transformations which change the colors. So yeah, that, these are this. If you use these, the LUT file won't work. Uh, sharpening, stuff like transform and crop, you don't want that. Just only these uh, adjustments. So I choose copy and then I go to this file and I'm going to paste the adjustments. You see the image is different color now. So what we can do is export this one. What I do is export it to PNG and no changes. Export. Then I export it to this folder where I made a lot of LUT files already. I'm going to sort on date, and there it is neutral 512 1. I'm going to rename it to make it a little bit easier to recognize. It was this profile so I'm going to if I go to rename here I can copy <laughs> its name of the preset I'm going to rename that neutral file to the same name as the preset then I'm going to the LUT generator and I'm pressing convert to cube and I go to the folder where I just created that PNG Sort of by date, so now I can. Ah, it's here. Grid Fiddy Fuji Film. It's a free preset from the internet. Press open. Conversion is done. And you can see there is now a dot cube file, and that's the LUT file. What you can do with this dot cube file is import use it in different programs, but I use it in Darktable. So I'm going to Darktable now. Um, what's th the best thing if you never used Darktable before, for me was to go to global settings, go to processing. Here you can change the LUT3D root folder file. I already um, selected the correct folder where my LUT files are in, which makes it a little bit easier to work with. And I also use 
auto apply pixel workflow defaults to the sigmoid workflow and that's easier for me i get better results in dark table i don't know exactly what it does but for me it's it works it's easier to work with and probably if you're converting from lightroom to dark table that's probably the best thing you can do so i'll change it to that now i have the same image here i'm going to double click it okay here you see all the the different uh things you can do with um with dark table there are even way more modules and it's pretty overwhelming but if you press this one you can see the active modules and that's way easier to work with and also this quick access panel this is quite similar to what's in uh, lightroom so if you get overwhelmed just use this and this button and it's way easier now we want to apply to this image the LUT we just made. So I'll just put LUT here. I'm searching for the LUT module and I activated it. Then I choose the LUT I just made. Uh, it was this one. The Grid 50 Fuji Film Dynamic Cube. Select. And there you have it. So now we have similar image um, in dark table as we had in lightroom let's see it's a bit more maybe a bit more contrasty this one and of course because i um you with the lit you can't convert the the grain uh you have to add that in da dark room uh, or dark table again so if you see here's quite a grain you can see what grain is applied here it's amount 37 size 25 it's quite a heavy grain we can add that as well if you want so we go to search in to grain and we add the grain module we apply we turn it on and zoom in let's see it's quite a lot slower than uh, lightroom though you see there's uh, quite a grain and maybe we can also um, make it a little bit more contrasty like the Lightroom file. You see uh, we always have to tweak some stuff to make it exactly the same and probably you never get it exactly the same. But, uh, well, uh, you, you don't know it after... Uh, after you convert to dark table and edit everything in dark table so i try to give the image a little bit more contrast mm. maybe a little less exposure to make it a little bit more dramatic and dark um, a little bit more vibrant and of course there's a lot of things you can do here and i have no idea what you can what you can do with all these uh things so i just uh, do the simple stuff now and uh, i'm learning uh, learning stuff in the dark table later for example if i want to crop this i i just think i'll just search for crop. yeah here you see there's a crop module let's see what happens when i'm activating that uh, original image maybe zoom zoom out a little can i crop now yeah okay well that's just as easy as uh, lightroom so there you have it uh, this is one of the presets i can make another one Mm, let's take this picture now uh, this is an edited let's apply this one you see it's quite different mm. so we go to copy again only the color changes copy 
Then we have to reset this one, of course. Uh, let's go to the imported state. So it's back to normal and paste again. So now I changed this again. I'm going to export it. Let's see, it's called Kodak Elite Chrome 100. I'm going to copy the name. Here it is again, neutral. Change the Kodak, change it to that name. Ooh, I closed the, the LUT generator. Let's see, I have that in documents, LUT generator. There you go, convert to cube. Was this one? Conversion is done. So let's go to this image. Go to LUT. Again, it's it's not the same, but <laughs> it has similarities. Again, this one has grain. And it's quite a lot darker, so probably you have to change, tweak some. Some sometimes I have quite a similar look to it after applying the LUT. But uh, well, you can if, if I disable the LUT, you can see quite the difference. So it it does quite a lot. A LUT. <laughs> it, so I, I also made uh, for an export for. Instagram with borders. So in, in Instagram, it's annoying if you have vertical images and horizontal images or portrait and uh, landscape images mixed. Uh, it all get mixed, messed up in one message. So what I do is just make a border for uh, for Instagram. And I, I search here for border, but actually it's called framing. So oh, let's activate that and I'll get a white border around it and what I did was change the aspect ratio to square and made the border size zero and this is this you can apply on every image and you then it's just a square image with a white border so um, I use that to make a style that's the IG border but I can show you how create and then I select none and just do the framing and I'll say uh, Instagram border save and when I use I go to the um, export of images you can change, you can set the profile here, let's see, style, and then I have Instagram border here, and then I say append history, so it adds to the, to the export, or else it changes everything, so it adds to it, to everything you changed, or else it replaces everything, and then you have no edit. Uh, so if you press export, I have here, I have a like folder set up. When I go to that folder, let's see, uh, it's this one. Here it is, it's this one. So with a white border around it. And I can also do this one, export. And now we have this one as well. So that's it.